This is why I stopped vlogging. Hello. This feels very odd doing this. Long time no see. Okay, where do I even start? To keep this brief, I think I just kind of ran out of steam really. I find social media quite hard to keep up with if I don't have like some kind of like purpose with it. Especially now because so many people are on social media, it can be quite overwhelming. And so I just feel like if I'm not, if I don't really have anything of value to contribute, I kind of just grind to a halt. Also, I was sharing a lot of my baby boy, Gabriel. And that I have kind of wasn't really sure how I felt about after a while. Um, I really loved sharing my pregnancy and my like early motherhood journey, I suppose. And I found it personally really helpful and I built a community. I felt like it was the first time I was actually using social media for how you're supposed to use it. And from being pregnant in a pandemic um, and giving birth in a pandemic, I found real joy and fulfillment from doing that and connecting with so many of you who are going through the same thing and like, people that helped me with breastfeeding and routine and formula recommendations and all this stuff. Like I, I felt like I really connected with you guys and it was a real like source of support. And it's funny because it was really as Gabe started to get older and become more of a person, I just felt quite uncomfortable sharing him. So I've decided not to anymore. Um, and I know that you guys will be okay with that, but it's just not something that I feel like I want to do. I have no problem talking about him and like the stage that we're at and what we're going through and all this kind of stuff. But I think what I really want to focus on with this channel is more, I guess, being a mum to an extent, like, like we can talk about mum things if you want to, but it's more being a working mum and how I balance everything and my business and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that that might be quite good to kind of take you on that journey with me rather than this is me at home being a mum and this is my son and all that kind of stuff. I hope that's okay. I also think I wanted to just highlight as well. I think it's easy when you do this to kind of put pressure on yourself to feel like you need to be uploading really regularly and there's like an expectation because this is so many people's job. However, this isn't my job. And I think I'm finally at the point where it's like, I'm saying that out loud, like, out loud, out loud, like this is not my job. I just do this as a hobby because I enjoy it. At some point during my journey with this, I have like monetized it and worked with brands and stuff. And that's always great. But actually I don't want this to be that. If something was to happen and a brand was to approach me and want to gift or do something, depending on what it was, I'd consider it. But, but the emphasis on this being that for me just isn't there. With that in mind, I'm just going to upload when I feel like it, basically. Um, and that might be every week, it might be every two, it might be once a month. Basically, just don't expect too much from me. To be honest, you guys never have, and I completely, I really appreciate that. It's also striking a balance between how much you want to share about your life and you as an individual on the internet, I guess putting like a boundary in, I suppose. And again, like, I feel like I've always been able to tread that balance quite well because none of you have ever like had massive expectations of me in terms of how much, do my eyebrows look really skewed? I've never had anyone feel like entitled to know more about me than I want to share kind of thing. I'm actually getting ready for work, I'm in the salon. Today, which is Wednesday, through until Saturday, it's December, hair is very, very busy. Oh God, that's gone very blue. Okay, so as I just said, I am working today in the salon. Gabe's at nursery today, Hazy just dropped him so that I can get ready. So he's got a nice little day to himself. All right then, well, I'll see you later. Okay, okay love you, bye. One of the biggest updates for you is that we are moving, which is very exciting. So before I go down to the car, I'm just gonna go down to the coffee shop below our building because I am taking advantage of having that um, as much as possible. We are only, this light is awful. We are only moving about 10 minutes up the road, but I won't be able to come to this coffee place as often, i.e. most mornings. So yeah, I am 
as I say, I'm taking full advantage of the fact that I won't have this below me as of next week. I can't believe we're moving in a week. Okay, so here we are all together again. So I've updated you on not vlogging for ages. Um, I also just didn't really feel, just, I didn't feel, I didn't feel like it. Uh, I didn't feel like I had anything to say, anything of use to contribute to the internet space. Um, I felt like I'd kind of just reached the end of, I guess, documenting, what is going on? Documenting my pregnancy and motherhood journey up to that point, basically. She really missed doing this as well, which is why I want to upload today. And yeah, we've got some kind of exciting things happening. So I just briefly said we're moving. Um, we're always going to be moving at some point in the next few months. Our lease for our flat finishes at the end of March. Um, and we've been there three years. I can't believe it. It's just flown. And I've loved living there. We love the flat so much. It's been wonderful to be there given the situation with the pandemic and being locked down because it's a really nice location. Having a baby there, it's just been, oh, it's just been great. Um, however, it's really expensive and we're parents now so we need to just be a bit more responsible with our money and I know that when it comes to the end of the lease they'll hike the rent up a bit more anyway and we were just like do you know what it's not worth it so we we're staying where we are as in the town that we're in and we are literally moving up the road and we have actually managed to get a house which I cannot believe because when we started looking we basically started looking early because I hate rushing to move and we thought let's just see what we can find and if we like something we'll go for it and we can just pay to get out our contract early anyway started looking I'll tell you it was bleak where we live is just expensive and when something decent comes up it go it's just very stressful i actually think it's not just where we live i think that's just the property market in general is very stressful i was quite set on wanting to find a house if we could okay, long story short sorry just like just get to the point mary a house came up it was perfect it was one of those ones where because we were already looking, the estate agent knew what we wanted, rang us as soon as this came like available. It wasn't on the market yet. We were the first and only people to see it. We put an offer in, it was accepted and away we go. Um, and again, looking early, that was the benefit because I knew it was similar with the flat we're in now that the same thing happened. They knew we wanted to uh, flat in that building. And so we just waited until one came up and we were able to see it. Our flat didn't go on the market when we first got it. It also hasn't gone on the market this time because they've got that many people that want to spend that much money to live there. Um, so it went pretty much straight away. We had three people come to view it in one day and that was it and then it was gone. Gabe doesn't have to change nursery. Our lifestyle doesn't really have to change that much because we're still living where we want to live. And yeah, I'm just so excited, but I cannot wait to actually get the move over and done with because I hate moving. I, as I say, am on my way to a salon. I think I have mentioned this in previous vlogs, but I went back to work-ish doing hairdressing quite soon after having Gabe, he was like four months old. And I just, it's because you can be very casual with hairdressing, you can just go back to work because I was only doing a couple of people like every week. Um, so it wasn't really going back to work in the same way. Anyway, some of you may also know that I was working for another company at the beginning of the year doing uh, like contenty stuff, which is what my background is before I did hairdressing. I was doing that um, because obviously with the pandemic, I hadn't been able to do hair as much. Also, just having a kid and going back to work Basically, there's a lot around me in hairdressing, and essentially, what I have, what I have done ever since I retrained in hairdressing, which was years ago, is actually never let myself completely focus on it because I have these very self-limiting beliefs around it, and so I've always kind of had to hold on to some kind of employment because that gave me comfort instead of going completely self-employed with hairdressing and just going for it. There's no reason I can't go for it. 
I, it's just me. Um, however, I have let go of that and I am just going for it. I've been listening to a lot of manifestation podcasts, trying to change my like headspace around my view of my success. Anyway, let's not get too deep. And this opportunity to work at the salon actually came up before the summer. It's my friend's salon. She basically said, do you want to come and work in the salon a couple of days a week? I've got a full client list of blondes and balayages. Do you want to come and see how it goes? And I'd wanted a space. I was doing hair at home and I've always wanted my own space because there's only so much I can do at home. So it's very limiting. So when this came up, I was like, absolutely. And it's gone really well and I re it's it's been great to have the space. I do still have this desire to have my own space though. So anyway, now fully self-employed, just doing hair, and I love it. So it it actually varies how often I'm in the salon. Because I'm self-employed, I basically pick and choose. Out, I do two days definitely, and then outside of that, I pick and choose when to work. But yeah, that's in a long-winded way, that's basically me saying I'm now, really focusing on actually building this business in the way that I've always wanted to. And that also involves possibly next year getting my own studio space. So I thought that would be like an interesting thing to like document to some extent. And I also feel very strongly about the industry that I'm in, the hair and beauty industry, as an option for a working mum, because this is actually why I went into hairdressing because it's so flexible, no one will ever ask why, you're per why you work part-time or when are you gonna go back to working full-time. You basically work as much or as little as you need to depending on what stage you're in a, you're, you are in life. And it's just, I absolutely love doing it, but the flexibility that it affords you when you wanna have a family, you just don't feel like it's career or family. And when you work for a corporate, it is. Right, I've arrived at work um, and my memory card got full so I couldn't delete whilst I was driving. But basically, in a very long-winded way, I was just trying to say that I really love hairdressing and beauty and um, I kind of want to use this space to show, I guess, you, like once you've had a baby, you can still like pursue your dreams. I don't know if it'll be as whimsical as that, but that's kind of the gist, basically, of what I'm getting at. Uh, but yes, I'm going to head in and start my day. Oh hi, good morning, well, good afternoon actually, it's not good morning. I am just having some lunch, some scrambled eggs um, on toast with sriracha and then that mayonnaise. I got it from Emily Mariko on TikTok. You may kind of notice I'm somewhere different, so we have moved. Um, and I thought, it's Sunday today, and I thought I may as well do a little bit of vlogging today and kind of just wrap this up and put this up before Christmas and then I'll probably see you after Christmas but we are in a different location we have moved it's all very chaotic Gabe's just down having a nap Hainsey's popped into town because we this morning ordered some Ikea stuff and went to pick it up from a place near us because you can you can order some things to be picked up um you don't have to go to Ikea but not every, you can't order everything so there's other things that we need to order after Christmas because we're actually going away tomorrow for Christmas um, with my family, which I'm so excited about. But yes, we need storage because there's none here. So yes, we went this morning to pick up a couple of the bits that we've ordered. One was a chest of drawers for Gabe's room and then bedside tables for our room. I still need to get another chest of drawers for our room and then a storage situation to go in this bit here. Um, and then also, oh, and a TV stand <laughs> because we've got our TV on this table at the moment. So we want to get it. We've found a stand that will fit within this little fireplace bit quite nicely. So anyway, that's the update. Also, actually, this arrived. That's this baby Zen yo-yo. For any of you mums out there, you may know what a baby Zen yo-yo is. Um, I have ordered Gabe a new buggy because he was growing out of his old one. And with going away, this one's just much more compact. So I need to open that and have a look at it. There's our mirror. We got that put up the other day. Yeah, there's just a little brief, the kitchen's down there. I also just want to show you one more thing. We haven't been able to decorate um, for Christmas because we're going away so there's no point, but I did get this Christmas wreath made. Isn't that just stunning? On the door. Oh, 
I just love it so much. Basically, let me come back to you. Basically, a friend of mine is an amazing florist. Um, she makes wreaths, you know, to support a local business and support her around this time of year. Um, I bought a Christmas wreath off her and she delivered it last week um, because I just thought if I can't put my tree up, I need to do something because I just have not been feeling festive at all. And as soon as the wreath arrived and I put it on the door, I just felt so happy. Uh, um, she's called Garage Florals. I'll link all her stuff below. She does beautiful arrangements. She does wedding flowers, um, wreaths, like all sorts of floristry type things. So um, I would definitely recommend her because her arrangements are beautiful. So I'll put all her details down below. Anyway, she didn't ask me to do that, by the way. I've just done it because, as you can see, her wreath was stunning. I have been thinking about this buggy ever since um, I had Gabe basically I was recommended it when I was pregnant and I ummed and ahed over the baby's end because it's quite expensive it's one of the most expensive ones within that kind of category Gabe's grown out of his eye candy one but absolutely love that one, would recommend it to anyone that's in the market for a buggy. Um, it's nice and robust. I don't know, like looking at the baby's end for newborns, it just looked like the bassinet's so low to the ground and it just always looked a bit like precarious to me. So it's been nice to have a more robust buggy like the eye candy because then you just feel like the baby's protected. But as they get older, you just need something that's a bit easier to manoeuvre. And especially now that we've moved, it's not so easy to get in and out the front door. So I'm finding that a bigger buggy is quite cumbersome to move around. But before being in the flat, that wasn't something I ever noticed with the eye candy, but it's just basically the point we're at now. We needed something that was easier to manoeuvre, smaller, and also that was gonna um, fit Gabe for the next year or so because he's, just too big for everything um justification for buying it was that if we're lucky enough to have a baby number two i'd be quite happy to use this with the bassinet attachment um from newborn stage because now having done it for having having done that once already it's such a short amount of time that you use the bassinet that actually i'd rather have something like the yo-yo that then you don't have to change it like you really don't have to change it until they're like walking around and don't need a buggy anymore whereas with the eye candy one it says it goes up to the age of three but as i say gabe's very very long and quite a tall boy and he's already grown out of it so he barely made it to two he just decided to go for it because i wanted it that's that on that i bought it from natural baby shower and i actually got 10 percent off because if you sign up to their email newsletter, you get 10% off. And then I paid £10 for it to be delivered today, which is Sunday, because I only ordered it yesterday. Um, so it's 429 So with the postage included, I ended up paying 396 um, with the 10% off. So that's quite a big discount. I'm just putting that out there. If you are in the market for one, then go for it. Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm just in my kitchen, actually. I'm just tidying up after dinner. It's a bit later. I've got a different top on. I thought I would just wrap this vlog up because I didn't earlier on after all the excitement um, over the baby's end. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. It's so nice to be back. I'm going to rush now to try and get this up at a decent hour on this Sunday evening. But yeah, I probably won't see you till after Christmas. So I hope you all have a good one, um, as good as it can be. And yeah, look after yourselves. Try and stay healthy, be happy. And yeah. Lots of love. Mwah.